This week on Maker Update, the toys come alive, new hardware from Evil Mad Scientist, open source mind control, LED neon goes big, and giant robot snails. Hey, I'm Donald Bell, back again with another Maker Update. It has been a while. I've missed you guys. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing okay. Uh, I'm excited to be heading into the holidays and putting this year behind us. I have a lot of great stuff to share with you this week. Let's get started with the project of the week. I absolutely love this insane contraption made by Nicholas Roy and Felix Fiskus for the Fano Science Center in Germany. It's a tangle of hacked toys, all donated from local families. Beneath it all is a kind of marble run where a ball makes its way through a maze of tubes. It makes stops along the way, triggering different actions that help tell a story. It's like a big mechanical story sequencer. The whole contraption is installed behind a window, so there's no physical interaction with it. To make it go, visitors are prompted to connect to a local Wi-Fi network hosted by Raspberry Pi and visit a web page that acts as a control interface. From the interface, you can start the machine, but you can also trigger some other interactions, moving toys, making sounds, blinking lights, all that fun stuff. Looking at the specs, you've got a Raspberry Pi 4 computer, 25 Arduino Nanos, 19 servos, 720 NeoPixels, and three pneumatic air movers for pushing or pulling the ball through different tubes. It looks like a lot of work, but also a ton of fun. The best part is they've included the STL files and Pi server code for you to use and adapt for your own mechanical menagerie. I'm thinking you could do something similar for a holiday window display for your home that people outside can trigger, or maybe you can find a local business that will let you set up something like this in their shop window. Now for some news, Evil Mad Scientist has announced their latest plotter robot, the AxiDraw Mini Kit 2. It sells for $325 and offers more precision and a simpler assembly than the first version of the Mini Kit. There are bigger versions, of course, going all the way up to an 11 by 17 plotting area. This version, this mini version, only gets you a six by four inch area, but I tell you what, it's a tireless beast when it comes to writing holiday cards. More projects on Instructables, Mohammed al Rafia has a guide on creating a proof of concept mind controlled wheelchair. The RC platform here is essentially an inexpensive three wheeled robot chassis connected to an Arduino. The coolest part of this project is a look at the OpenBCI Ultra Cortex Mark IV EEG headset and software used to read brain activity. This is an open source kit that starts at $300 for the EEG headset and another $500 for a board that translates the EEG data and sends it to your computer over Bluetooth. Not cheap by any stretch, but as an Arduino compatible open source brain interface capable of detecting several nuanced kinds of brain activity, I don't know anything else like it. Also on Instructables, Gabba People has this awesome guide on making relatively large scale LED neon signs with animation. This neon style 12 volt LED strip is one of the coolest lighting materials to come out in the past few years and it's only gotten better and more affordable. This show has highlighted a bunch of smaller LED neon projects, especially from the Adafruit crew. But what about a truly Vegas scale neon sign that blinks and animates? How would you pull one of those off using LEDs? This guide walks you through the entire process from concept to coding to fabrication and installation. The good news is that it's completely possible and it looks great. The bad news is that there's a lot of wiring to wrangle behind the scenes. Still, it beats learning how to blow glass and work with high voltage neon transformers. This week, I also learned about a UK group called Air Giants. They make these massive inflatable sculptures that light up from the inside and move. It's like large scale soft robotics, but just for entertainment. These remind me of the work of Astro Botanicals, a local group here in the Bay Area that make large inflatable sculptures from nylon ripstop fabric. Same idea, but Air Giants adds movement using these hexagon shaped vents sprinkled throughout the sculpture that can be opened and closed remotely to shift the air pressure in the design. The effect is incredible and I imagine it's something you could replicate with a servo and some 3D printed elements. As someone who's into animatronics, this is like a whole other direction I hadn't considered. Now for some tools and tips on the I Like To Make Stuff channel, Bob Claggett offers some advice on choosing the right silicone for molding and casting. 
from shore hardness to deciphering product names, in seven minutes you get a whole bunch of useful information uploaded to your brain. On Cool Tools, I have a talk with Mike Warren about his new favorite laser cutter. This is a large 90 watt machine that can be had for around $3,000. If you're shopping for something that can handle larger, thicker material than the Glowforge style desktop products, Mike has a lot of useful information to share. He also introduced me to a piece of software called Lightburn that can act as a polished front end for a variety of inexpensive import machines. You can think of it as a lightweight illustrator combined with a 3D model slicer. On Tested, everyone's putting out their year-end favorite things videos, and they're all great, but my favorite pick so far comes from Adam Savage, and it's this ultra-thin hook and loop material. There have been so many times when I want to stick a thing to a thing temporarily, but the thickness of traditional Velcro products makes it look weird. In those cases, I'll often go with glue or tape or embedded magnets, but this looks like a promising alternative. You also have to check out this entirely 3D printed linear snap action mechanism by Greg Zumwalt. It's such a simple thing, but you can put it to all kinds of uses. One incredible example that Greg shows is this toy snake design where he uses the mechanism like a clutch to switch between the forward and reverse on the gear. How cool is that? For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, Lemore from Adafruit has a great video about different types of piezo and magnetic buzzers available on DigiKey and how to search for them. Piezos are a common and dirt cheap way to add little tones and buzzer sounds to your projects, but they can also be a little annoying. For a super small alternative that's more sonically flexible and can be surface mounted to a custom board, check out some of the magnetic buzzers that Lemore recommends and uses on several Adafruit products. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, or leave a comment. You can get on the Maker Update newsletter. Uh, however you stay in touch, don't miss next week's show. I've got Becky Stern guest hosting. I can't wait to see what she comes up with to share. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.